Welcome to Music She Missed, the podcast where I attempt to get my best friend caught up with some of the most popular songs and artists that impact our lives. I'm Allison. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I missed all the music. You sure did, Rachel. Jeez Louise. <laughs> uh, hey. Hi. How's it going? Great. <laughs> you said that with such um, sincerity. I did. Well, I always get a little nervous during part A mm. of each episode just because I'm just not sure what happens. And I don't like surprises. I don't like surprise parties. I just don't mm-hmm. like surprises. I know. Yeah. Um, well, I have a surprise for you then. No, I'm just <laughs> um, <laughs> no actually, I, um, I want to start our episode by asking you. Huh. about uh, your favorite theme park? Ooh, good yeah. question. So, um, I don't know. I, it really depends on who you go with that makes the theme park. Sure. Because, sadly to say, I've been to Disney, and it was just... Ugh. That's because you didn't go with me, super Disney fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, it just... Anyways, but I had a, a good I can't time believe, Wait, you don't like Disney? No, I love Disney. But it was weird. I went to Disney World without kids or... Yeah, I... Th- and just gone as an adult yeah. and by myself kind of deal. It Wait, was just why did you go to a theme park by yourself? It wasn't by myself. Uh, my just husband with people that with you me. don't like? Oh, okay. No, and I like my husband a right, lot. Right, right. Um, but still, it was just it was just different. It was a different stage in my life kind of deal. So you, did, so you didn't have a great time in Disney World. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Uh, what's a good theme park experience? Okay, so I would say Great Adventure Six Flags. Mm. I would say 1989. What? It <laughs> makes just, a difference. You were like, when I was a child, yes. I went to Six Flags and it was great. I remember it was my older brother. He um, woke us up that morning and he, at the time, my sister and I were sharing rooms. Mm. And so I don't know how he did it. Like, he was waking us both up at the same time. He's like, Rachel, Rachel, wake up, wake up. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? I'm taking you to Six Flags. Oh. And it was just so fun. So it was my brother and my sister and I, and then my other brother came. So it was just us four. Our parents didn't go with us. Oh. And it just felt like a lot of fun. So that's a good surprise. So tell me, amusement parks. Yes. What are we doing? Come on. Well, the artist for this week has an amusement park. What? Like, named for the artist. <gasps> I know who you're talking about. Well, can we do the big reveal and just pretend like you don't? Because I was like, she's not going to know. But you know. She's had plastic surgery. I mean, really. I it think you do know. Good. Let's do the big reveal just for fun, and we can say it at the same time. We'll make sure we're saying the same person. Ready? Ready? Dolly Parton! Hey! I don't know any Hi-fi. of her songs. Well, yeah, I assumed that, but you know about her. Well, she, yeah, she has had some serious plastic surgery that does not look So you know what she looks like, basically, is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, She has a theme park. Isn't that like in Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia it area? It is. Millions of people visit Dollywood every year. Like, three million people. I think my mom mentioned a couple years ago that's on her bucket list. It's like, the, like, number one tourist destination in Tennessee or something. Oh I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I've never been there. Me neither. So, there are there roller coasters, or is it just yeah. her singing the whole time? No, it's like, an, I mean, it's a theme park. So, is she the only artist that has a theme park? Well, there are other artists who have famous parks. Prince had Paisley Park, and uh, Elvis had uh, Graceland, the- which kind of sounds like Disneyland, but it's not. Prince, the artist that we just did last week? Yeah. His home is was called Paisley Park. But huh. it's not like a theme park. So you know who Dolly Parton is. You know what she looks like. You know she has a theme park. That's a she, pretty good start. I know she sings country. Hey, another thing that you know. I know she's really nice. Why do you know that? I was watching some interview with her, and mm-hmm. she just seems like a really nice lady. Cool. What about her music, though? Should we do the little, I'm going to yeah. tell you some songs? Yeah, and... tell me some songs. Okay. Nine to five. Pass. Jolene. Pass. Uh, Yellow Roses. Pass. Okay. Um, have you ever seen the movie The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas? <laughs> no. Do you know what it is? No. Oh, it's a musical. 
and Dolly Parton stars in it. It has a very famous song called I Will Always Love You. Does that sound familiar? Isn't that with, like, Kevin Costner? Kevin Costner's not in that movie. He's like a bodyguard. (laughs) I think you're thinking... Okay, so um, that song has a famous cover by Whitney Houston. Oh, okay. Is that what you're picturing? I'm just thinking of Kevin Costner holding someone coming out with smoke on the side. (laughs) And I don't think it was Dolly Parton in his arms. (laughs) It certainly was not. (laughs) Okay, um... (laughs) <laughs> so you have heard that song before, though. You just haven't heard the Dolly Parton version. I guess not. Which no. is the original version. Okay. On to episode number two of season four. <laughs> Rachel Do- doesn't know. <laughs> Rachel knows who Dolly Parton is, though. So yes. on a scale of one to ten, where would you rate your current knowledge of country great Dolly Parton? I would say three. I think that's fair. Because you know a little bit more about her yeah. than you know normally. Yeah. But you don't know any of those songs, so... No, but you know what? I have, like, a hopeful four, almost, because I'm feeling like if I hear some of those songs, I might say, oh, that was her. Yeah, maybe. So, you but... have surprised me in the past, but you also claim you don't like country. Yeah. So I don't know so how you would have come true. across it. I well, don't I don't know how you missed stuff, so... I know. <laughs> That well, is the big mystery here. <laughs> you do have some homework. Yes, I do. One hour of listening. Every day dun, dun, for dun. a week. And I can't skip any songs. You won't want to. She's good. Really? And then uh, we'll come back together. We'll talk about it. And you will uh, share your feelings of Dolly Parton. And I'll get to rate her all over again. Yes, that is true. <laughs> All right, audience, we hope you will check out our Dolly Parton playlist by searching for Spotify colon user colon music she missed. Uh, Rachel, we'll be back together in a week, but audience, we'll see you in just a moment. All right, here we go. Welcome back. Rachel, you spent the last week listening to country legend Dolly Parton. <laughs> Why are you giggling? Well, um, our listeners may not be knowing this, but it's it's the summer right now as we record. Right. So it's probably like next year, winter yeah, by the time I actually it airs it. and things like that. So um, I'm sitting poolside and last week was Prince. And I was right. just, I was just really enjoying Prince Poolside, you know, Good hosting a couple music. pool parties. Mm-hmm. My friends are thinking I am so cool mm-hmm. to host, you know, pool party. Not only that, but with playing Prince. And then so the next, you know, same group of friends hosting another pool party. And I'm like, and it's like it's nine to Mr. five, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like they're like Rachel, what are you doing? You you had Prince last week. What happened? And I was like, no, Dolly Parton's cool. I like her. It's Islands in the Stream. We're just, you know, Eileen, you know, it's, that's this week. You're going to have to just enjoy it with me. You could listen to this on your own. I could, but I need to share my love with all people. Okay. <laughs> so Dolly Parton was um, my um, pool mate this week. <laughs> but not as well received. Yes, not well received. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like you enjoyed your week listening to her at any rate yes i honestly i did enjoy her there were some likes there were some dislikes there were some um there's a song that was indifferent to but most of the part it was just it was not only fun that i could listen to it poolside with friends but i could also um i had a little fun game with my daughter and her um best friend that was coming came over for a play date Mm -hmm. and my daughter's six and i was asking her Hey, let's play the music she missed game. Okay. Um, and it was kind of fun to enjoy that with her and giving her a chance to rate it one from ten, and also mm. just figuring out what the song meant to them. And um, it was just fun. And your daughter and the and her friends they liked it also. Yeah, they liked it. They just thought it was old people music, and so. Well, Dolly Parton is not a new person no. in the country music scene. In fact, she is the most honored female country performer of all time. Really? Yep. 
And she's still alive. Yes, she is. And she's still doing stuff. Doing stuff. Yes. She's cool. been very productive. She's got gold albums, platinum albums, multi-platinum albums. Wow. She's had, um, she set records. Mm. She's had 25 songs reach number one on the country music charts. Which wow. is tied with uh, the other female country great, Reba Nectar. I think she has a TV show. She did. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I have a question for you um, okay. about Dolly Parton. Sure. So she, she's obviously country. Yes, that is And she is has true. a very thick southern accent. Yes. To a point where I'm like, ooh, I've got to look at the lyrics for this song. I don't know really? what she's saying. Well, you do not understand what she's saying. Yes, I she's, do. Oh, okay. But I'm just saying there's some parts where I'm like, what was that word? Mm. Huh? I've got to look at the lyrics for that one. Okay. So can she sing a song without... Out a southern accent? <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, has she? I haven't heard anything that doesn't sound like her. Huh? I think that depending on this, the type of song, she might lay it on more thicker, thick, right? Yeah, yeah. So some of her songs are a little bit more poppy. There are mm. some songs that cross over into the pop charts. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think Nine to Five is very country no, sounding. It's not. Whereas something like um, same Joshua the or the yeah. Uh, Daddy was an old time preacher man. Those songs I feel sound even more oh, country. Yes. But that may not be her voice, right? That could be a variety of things. The types of instruments that they're used, the type mm -hmm. of songs that they're singing. There's, like, for example, when we listen to the Beatles, mm -hmm. I remember a long time ago when I was realizing wait a second, the Beatles are British. They're not American. Because right. their songs, like, twist and shout right but they don't have that british accent they still do so some songs just like this some songs that the beatles recorded and remember you did not hear the vast beatles catalog it just uh. got a little smattering right like we do every week time um some beatles songs are more obvious in the accent than others and yeah. especially ones that are more american in style mm. like twist and shout yeah why would you hear it in that yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they're yeah. imitating Americans. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I was just wondering with her accent, because it just, it just seems very Southern, and if she'd ever tried. Um, so another question, kind of curious. It's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> um, does she only sing, or can she play an instrument? Does she write her own music, too? Because you mentioned, like, with her southern accent being a little bit more stronger depending on the instruments that mm -hmm. are played does she play any of those yeah so um a quote from her is that she play, this is a, a literal quote i play some of everything i ain't that good at none of it but i try to sell it mm. but she does um the interviewer that i in that interview that i read saw her play live eight different instruments. The wow. dulcimer, the banjo, the guitar, the piano, the recorder, saxophone, right? Huh. So she's, she's like a showman, right? So yeah, she yeah. can play a lot of different things to a an acceptable Yeah, to be degree. on stage, but she's not like Jimi Hendrix with his guitar. Well, no. What is your comparison there? Like with Jimi Hendrix, he's like known for his guitar work. Right. No, she's known for but being I didn't a country she, music singer. She, I oh, didn't know if she was like, oh, I'm known for my banjo, too, or something like I that. I think she's known for her singing. Yeah. And the instruments are... Um, and you asked if she's a songwriter, and she she does wow. write her own music. So um, I think a lot of times for songwriters, if you think about it, an instrument is a way that oh, you can yeah. help facilitate that, right? Yeah. And play with that and be creative. So I'm sure that she plays a lot of these instruments to facilitate song creation that's cool she's very talented yes i can see how she's won all those platinums and golds and silvers and stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> so you realize that, that those are how many albums are sold that's what gold and platinum and multi-platinum means really yeah so like an album goes gold that means it sold x number of million copies I thought it was some kind of award <laughs> oh no so like oh i've been I've confusing got... you for four seasons <laughs> So wait a second. It's not like the Olympics and they're standing there as the national anthem for their country is sung? Well, I don't know how they receive the <laughs> album, but when an album goes platinum, what that means is that it's sold a certain number. I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but it's like a certain this number of This is season four of Music She Missed, and I'm just learning that. 
Sorry. Oh, Rachel, so sad. <laughs> <laughs> a Grammy is a little... Uh, actual award award. Like, you know, statue ad yeah. that you would receive. That's a, an award. That's what I thought platinum and gold It and just It silver. just means like, hey, you've sold a lot. And that's why I was wondering why wasn't there any bronze. But moving on. And the Olympic <laughs> Platinum Super Medal goes to... Oh my gosh. I'm so special. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. I mean, it's honestly, it's a thing. Why would you know that? Why exactly. I Why would I know that? That is on me. Bad teacher. Bad, Allison. But the sad thing is I've been sitting here for four seasons across from you, smiling along. <laughs> wow. Oh, Dolly Parton, you're teaching me so much. So I just checked into it. Uh, 500,000 albums would be gold. A million would be platinum. Wow. Two million or more would be multi-platinum. And she has several of these. So wow. she is high-grossing country so, music artist. So they count how many songs that are downloaded on Spotify or bought on Apple iTunes? You know, I'm not sure how it works. Nowadays. Nowadays. I'm sure that there is some sort of digital... I mean, I know that, like, if you buy it on iTunes, that's going to count. How it works with streaming? That mm. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, so, kind of curious. Is there any other history or anything else that you wanted to chat with me about? Because if not, I want to share my likes, because they're fun. Yeah, there are some things that... Uh, I would like to share with you. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think that you will be very interested to know is yeah. that she does have a long history outside of music in movies. Really? Yeah. So Have I seen her in anything? Well, you've seen 9 to 5. Have I? Well, you knew the song. Did you Did you not know that one? No. I... So wait a second. Was it the song or I played the movie? For you, I played for you the song 9 to 5 after our intro. Yes. Last week. Yes. And as soon as it got to the chorus, you were like, oh, I know this song. And I thought that meant you had seen the movie. No. Oh. Okay. Well, I've heard the song, like, probably in a, in a restaurant or something. So, I would say 9 to 5 is one of the most famous movies that she's in. It came out in 1980. You know, it's a comedy. It's got Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin in it. And she, um, Dolly wrote the song for mm -hmm. the movie. That's cool. But that it's a pretty famous kind of, you know, comedy chick flick from I'll the have 80s. To look into it. So Is it was, on Netflix? That I don't know. Huh. Okay. Uh, she's in another movie with um, Burt Reynolds, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, which is a musical. Huh. And the song I Will Always Love You is in that movie. Cool. Was she in um, Steel Magnolias? Yes. There See, you go. You know stuff that she was in. That was with Julia Roberts. Really? I'm trying to remember. Ju yeah, sure was. And Sally Field. I mean, that's, that's kind of a lot of stuff. You know, she was really at her height, like, in the um, in the 80s. 80s, maybe early 90s. Yeah, 70s. Yeah. Well, I mean, forever. I mean, she's been around forever, right? Uh, yeah. She was born in 1946, right? So, And she got her start young. Mm. So she has literally been doing this her entire life, and not just the music, but the movies, too. So she knows really no, nothing else. I would say probably not. But the, um, so she got her start. We didn't really talk about this. Yeah, um, I'm curious. You know, like many artists that we have studied, she started out singing in church. Yes. You know how that goes. That's uh, the story of a lot of these people. Yes. Her family was musical, right? Yes. So starting out young. Um, in 67, there was another country music um, guy named Porter Wagner. He invited uh, Dolly to join his organization, a weekly show. They did lots of duets. Um, the song Jolene is from that time period. I like that song. But, you know, I just mentioned I Will Always Love You. Yeah. Right? Probably the most famous song that she has written, at least as far as I can tell. Because you've heard that song maybe later on by Whitney Houston. In the movie The Bodyguard? Yeah, she's the one that died in a bathtub. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm always scared of falling asleep in a bathtub now. <laughs> well, you probably don't have to worry too much. No, I don't. Um, but the reason I bring that up is because that song was written by Dolly Parton about her relationship with Wagner. Really? Yeah. Like, they're... So, she's married to him. 
No, she's actually married to a different guy. They've been married for more than 50 years. He just stays out of the limelight, and uh, huh. they didn't have any kids together. He's just like a cool cat, just chilling. He's, yeah, he's just like, he's like not a famous person, right? Mm -hmm. um, but she fell in love with someone else? No, I and think, off? I think that the, or was um, that before? I think that it's about their professional breakup. It is not like a love oh. song. Like, or at least like that was the motivation for the song, right? Songs can take lots of meanings depending on who's listening and who's bringing their own like story to it. Yeah. Right. But, um, she wrote that song about that professional departure. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. And I also want to like, thought it was a romantic song. Well, I think that a lot of songs is what we bring to it. And yeah. it is, I mean, it is romantic, but when somebody leaves your life, whether that person is a romantic partner or someone else, you can still say, yeah, have that yeah. sentiment, right? Um, other fun fact, um, Elvis Presley mm. had wanted to cover that song as well. And his manager was trying to get her to sign over the publishing rights to it. Ooh. And Did she? she uh, no. Really? She, one of the things she learned really early on is that the money is in the ownership. Mm. And so when Small Whitney woman. Houston made, did that cover later, that is partly how she, Dolly, made like yeah, a ton money. of money. Wow. Yeah. So being involved in publishing and using that, like that really good business sense is one of the reasons why she's also definitely like financially successful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other fun fact uh, that's unrelated to that is that uh, she's Miley Cyrus's godmother. Do you know who Miley Cyrus is? Yeah. Uh, well, if you don't know who that is, then it's no, not I'm, as I'm cool kinda, of a fact. Kind of trying to figure out who she is. Isn't she a, that mountain chick? Oh, Anna Montana? Yeah, that climbing the mountain song. I thought you were saying Hannah Montana. I thought you were confusing Mountain and Montana. No. But Miley Cyrus is Hannah Montana, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yes. The Climb. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. So fun facts about She's her Dolly Parton. mother. Yeah. Because Miley Cyrus's dad is famous country musician, Billy Ray Cyrus. Famous for Achy Breaky Heart. I actually know who that is. Oh, other fun fact. I just have lots of little tidbits today. Yes, you do. You know what she looks like. Yes, I do. Okay, what? Tell me what she looks like in your In, in your my brain. opinion? Yeah. She has a lot of hairspray in that hair. She actually wears wigs a lot of the time. Really? Yeah. And um, she has definitely undergone plastic surgery. Yeah, augmentations. Correct. Um, she has repeatedly joked about that fact by saying... <laughs> quote, it takes a lot of money to look this cheap. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> she's got, she's quite funny. She's got, she's got some good humor. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, she turned down, regardless of what, you know, all of that, she did turn down, um, several offers to pose nude for Playboy. Yeah. I don't see her. She did not do that. that. She was on the cover in the little bunny suit, but she is not ever she's not done that. And I have one more fact for you, because these are just, like, I know this is not our normal thing, where no, normally I, like, I, like, go through, I'm like, let me tell you about the history of this person, but I just want to, like, tell like you these the wacky facts. things. These are fun. Yeah. So here's, can you think of any other famous dollies? No. Okay. Should I? Do you remember Dolly the Sheep from, like, yes. 20 years ago-ish? That was, like, 2002. Maybe. Maybe earlier. Around then, right? Okay. So Dolly the Sheep, why is Dolly the Sheep famous? Because she, the cloning. Right. Did they from, clone Do from, Dolly Parton? No, but they named the sheep Dolly. After Dolly Parton. After Dolly Parton, because the cell that they used to clone the sheep was taken from an adult used mammary gland. Oh my goodness. Fun fact. Interesting. <laughs> I like she... searched that a couple times. I'm like, is this really, really true? true? <laughs> or is the internet lying to me? But the Guardian said it's true. The Guardian says it's true. 
There we go. There we go. Well, I want to talk about my likes and dislikes. Yes, because nobody wants to hear random stuff. They want to hear what you think about this super famous person. Yes. Well, I actually, I had a lot of fun this week. Good. Um, but not everything I liked. Um, so I actually am changing something. Um, I initially listed Jolene as a dislike. Okay. Because um, at first, I just didn't like the lyrics. Mm. Yeah. I just didn't like the delivery of the lyrics, but as the week progressed on, mm -hmm. I actually fell in love with the song, so it changed from a dislike to a like. What did you, was it just like the the content, like the idea of like someone singing to another woman like, don't take my man? Yeah, she should already know that. You should not be touching other people's men. You should just blanket, <laughs> oh, it's a blanket like, knowledge, like... don't touch other people's men. You should not have to write a song about it. <laughs> okay that's why i was like that's i don't like the lyrics of the song this woman is stupid she should just stay away from another person jolene man. is stupid yes oh, well yeah not everybody has the same moral compass you should never take a married man's son um yeah woman yeah 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 you should not take other people's spouses Anyways. Public service announcement. <laughs> From, uh, stay faithful to yes. your partner. Yes. Okay. Next. So, Wildflower okay. was a dislike. Oh, I loved that. I loved the lyrics of that song. <sighs> I didn't like the lyrics. You didn't? And I didn't like the choice of delivery of that song. Okay. This is a phrase you use often. Delivery. Mm -hmm. When you mean delivery, what do you mean? Where it's just... The lyrics of what she's trying to talk about, the lyrics of what the meaning of the um, the lyrics are, of just the wildflowers and things like that, and how she decides to deliver it in the the tone, the speed, the right, types so of instruments, the right. so it's just the sound in general. Because yeah, you just said tone, speed, instruments. It's just That's... the whole, all of it. It's like okay. I'm just like not liking the song. I feel like. Yes, it's right. That's why it's in the dislike pile. Oh no, totally acceptable. It's totally fine not to like it. It's just like when you say you often use the phrase delivery of the lyrics. Yeah. I'm trying to understand what if you mean like just the sound of the song, or if there's something about the person's actual like vocal tone or the emotion behind the tone, like what delivery? Because to me, delivery would mean the way that you're singing it like too breathy or too flat or too like um like not emotive or too emotive like that to me is what like delivery would mean but well, i think like you just don't like the song well like for an example the song has such movement mm. it has it's about growth it's about you know the mountains and um freedom to grow and i'm just like this should be such a song where I'm just like, I'm energized. I want to grow with this wildflower. And this song just doesn't deliver that in that way. And I'm like, ooh, I don't like the song. It's interesting because you, to you, the song was like about freedom, right? Well, and, she even says it in the lyrics. Right. But a lot of the lyrics are about how she was trapped. And so to me, I took the song from the opposite way. And kind of the sadness of um, her, quote, having no room for growth but or, also like, having to survive, right? To me, it's, like, a, it's not a song of, like, freedom and, and, like, joy. To me, it's a song of, like, being tough and, like, survival. Yeah. And so I... I and so I, I hear your aspects, but, but here it's, like... The wildflowers want to grow that if you feel like okay you have this opportunity to grow shouldn't you be energized in that growth if you had to leave the place that you love the people that you i mean to me it, it sounds like someone who was almost like emotionally or whatever like kind of forced out yeah like to me i i don't I don't find as much maybe joy in it as maybe you want to find. But that's just like a lyrical interpretation. Yeah. You don't like the song and that's okay. And I don't. <laughs> okay. Any other uh, songs you didn't love? Um, yeah. To Know Him. Okay. Uh, great. That is from the Trio album. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just Dolly. It also is uh, famous, uh, famous Linda Ronstadt hmm. and uh, Amy Lou Harris. Great lyrics. Love the lyrics. She's talented in the lyrics. Did she write that one? 
No, uh, she did not write that. That's actually a song by a totally different famous guy, uh, Phil Spector. It's been covered a lot, though. Other people covered it besides that. Phil Spector. Uh, Peter and Gordon did a cover. Hmm. Um, Amy Winehouse maybe did a cover. But um, but the beat is so slow for that song. Mm. I just didn't like it. And then um, the other last song that I didn't like was... Um, Kind of for the same reason, just didn't like the beat. Um, is the bar- bargain store? Oh, I kind of like that one. Yeah, pass. Fair enough. All right. But I did have one song that I was indifferent to. Um, <laughs> if you're indifferent, is it worth talking about? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if the f- um, songs fall into either of those columns. Right. Because I was just indifferent, and um, it's Here You Come Again, but it was a song that I couldn't stop thinking about. I, that and song so, got stuck in my head this So week, that was sure. the weird part of where, it's like, should I mention it, should I not? But it's got stuck in such a way, but even in the end of the week, I still couldn't put it in either of the columns. So I put them in the in different, in different column. <laughs> so. Okay, so that song has a um, not super interesting history but it is um is on the playlist Mm -hmm. because it was her first crossover from country to pop so the song charted in the country charts but also on just like the regular billboard charts Mm -hmm. so it's a song that i think is kind of likable whether you're a country music fan or just like a regular pop music fan Mm -hmm. it's one of the ones Mm -hmm. that i prefer um it also she won a, a grammy award for that song for best female country vocal performance. Huh. So it is not an unknown song in terms of her history and its um, relevance, I guess, in music history. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that changes anything for you. Nope. She's still in the indifferent All um, right. column for that well, If you'd one. lived in 1979, hmm. yeah, I did might it. have heard it. Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have heard it on the radio, but other people. Yeah, other people did. My husband could have. And it's one of the ones she did not write herself. Huh. Okay. But that's like a rare deal. So, I want to talk about my likes, though. Let's do it. My number one favorite song, to a point where I think when we do the bonus episode of this season, Mm -hmm. it will be the number one song. We, we're, we're fresh into this. Season. I know we're only into episode two. Okay, so right, I'm, but I'm it? still making my prediction. Okay, Islands in the Stream. <laughs> like okay. it was such a cute song it, to a point That's where cute. it was kind of funny. Even my husband knew the lyrics of the song before we started the Dolly Parton week. Really, and we were um, road tripping this week um, for a little bit of part of our week. And the song came about, and he started singing it. And then I started singing it on our road trip. It was kind of fun. You guys got a cheesy. connection with it. Yeah, we get a little cheesy sometimes. Yeah, so that song is actually a duet between um, Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Well, yeah, it's on the list of the Spotify list if I look at that. Oh, I see. Okay. That part I knew. You saw that it was not just her. Okay. Um, And then plus I noticed the voice kind of changed a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Big, big hit. I think it came out in 1983. Yep, 1983. And uh, it was just, it was a big song. It was in a lot of popular stuff. It's still in popular media. People are still aware of it. Obviously your husband yeah, I is aware it. of it. Um, covered but in different... I would totally cover that song if I could. <laughs> the Bee Gees have a version of it. Don't know who the Bee Gees are. Yeah, I know. See, it's so silly for me to be like, let me tell you all the other people. Uh, I actually was more familiar with it when I was younger from a 1998 like uh, sampling of it, I guess, in a song by Pross called ghetto superstar and it's the same tune but the lyrics are a little bit different huh so yeah just it's it's kind of pervasive that's what i'm saying is that yeah, it's in yeah. a lot of different places and um it's why you know your husband who i don't think is a country music fan no is still aware of the song thank goodness 
Cool. So you like that one? Any other, real quick, any other uh, yeah. fun ones? You I will always about? love you. I, I like the lyrics. You know, I thought, I thought it was, um, you surprised me a little bit about how it was more of a non, not more of a romantic um, song, but more of a communication to just the relationship of work. That's the inspiration. Like that. Yeah. But a good song will be able to be interpreted by anyone, yeah. you know, in whatever situation. And it is a love song in the best little chorus in Texas, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Higher and higher. That's a fun one. Yeah. Working to nine to five. This mm-hmm. one is a fun beat to dance with. Yeah. And also that was a good song to be poolside with. Both um, of those are in the like late seventies, early eighties, which is like disco time. Yeah. So they're very like danceable. Danceable yes. and just have fun and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, Daddy was an old time preacher man. I mm-hmm. thought the there was a fun story in the lyrics. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, that's nice. Okay, <laughs> kind of deal. Okay. So I liked Dolly. She was fun. Cool. Well, do you want to give your your rating? Sure, I'm ready. All right. So on a scale of one to ten, one being you wouldn't buy it out of the bargain store, mm-hmm. eh. and uh, ten being I will always love you, Dolly Parton. Where would you rate? Eight point five. What? What? I'm just that's so high, and you were like, I don't like this. I don't like this. Yeah, there was parts that I didn't like, so hence why she's not at ten or a nine. Okay. But also, I think. Um, knowing that there's some other artists that I gave a 7.5, right? I would write her above them. So you're telling me that you like country music? No. Uh, this is like the no. mo- this is like the no. biggest woman in country music, and you just gave her an 8.5, and you were like, I like this super famous country singer. Oh no. <laughs> I no. did not mean to trap you into liking country, but, but you also liked Johnny, Johnny Cash. Cash a lot, I know. And these are like some like legit country music people. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> We're a clean podcast. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is really amusing. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, as we go on and we do more country, how. Will I really like country? I don't know. This is like, <gasps> this is a shock. I was I certain know. that you were going to be like, mah, mah. but you like Dolly Parton more than like a lot of stuff. I know, but I thought she was fun. She is fun. I like that she's sincere, that I could feel her heart in her music. So maybe what she's you a don't sweetheart. like is like fake lame music, not a certain yeah. genre of music. No, but I could hear the heart in Nirvana. Like, he was, oh, he needed well, His a, heart was sad. His heart was sad <laughs> and he needed a hug. But, <laughs> but, like, when I got to know her heart, she seemed like a sweetheart, you know? She just, she was someone I wanted to get to know. Someone I actually wanted to meet. Aww. Now, I wanted to meet Nirvana for another reason of just wanting to give him a hug because he's sad. But for her, I want to, hey, I think I, she and I would be friends. Why don't we go to Dollywood? <gasps> we should. Road trip. Yay. <laughs> um, okay. Well, that, this has been just revelatory <laughs> and I got to rethink my whole thing here. I might need a new host cause I don't know very much about country music. Oh no, no, no. I will put my heels in the sand. If I turn this into a country music if podcast. You, no, no. I cannot love country. You're going to have to teach me more things about other things that just stir my heart away. I, I have a feeling that you want to not like country music because you associate it with a certain culture or a certain idea, a certain lifestyle, or a certain something. You have some kind of negative thing in your head and a stereotype and so you feel like if you decide you like country that you're like falling into that either becoming something that you don't like or negating some part of you like i'm a yankee darn it i am a yankee i know but that's okay uh no it's not (laughs) it's not okay (laughs) no it's not well at least i'm not a boston red sox fan you know, at least, at least, God. or a Chicago White Sox fan. Oh my gosh, 
God, even well, there worse. goes our Boston and Chicago onions. <laughs> All right. Well, Rachel, I'm glad you enjoyed the week. We've got a lot more stuff coming up in this season, so I hope you'll stick with me and come to every artist with the same open mind that Yay. you did this week. I will. This is fun. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate it. It is my pleasure. So if you, our audience, want to follow along with Rachel's journey of discovery, please follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Spotify by searching for Spotify colon user colon music she missed. Click follow so that you don't miss any more of our playlists. Also, we'd love it if you give us five stars on iTunes. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much and have a great week. Bye. Bye. Ha, <laughs>